உங்களுக்கு எல்லாருக்கும் வணக்கம் ஆ எனக்கு கொஞ்சம் கொஞ்சம் எனக்கு கொஞ்சம் கொஞ்சம் தமிழ் தெரியும் நான் இங்கிட்ட மெட்ராஸில் நான் ஐ ஐ வாஸ் பார்ன் இன் மெட்ராஸ் இங்கே கொஞ்சம் கொஞ்சம் தெரியும் இது பேச முடியாது ஸோ உங்கள் பர்மிஷன் எடுத்துகிட்டு நான் இங்கிலீஷில் பேசுகிறேன் காமரேட் நூறு மாமா ட்ரான்ஸ்லேட் பண்ணுவேன் ஆர் வெட்ரன் காமரேட் சங்கரையா ஹூஸ் ஹியர் வித் அஸ் ஹீ இஸ் பீன் அன் இன்ஸ்பிரேஷன் சின்ஸ் மை ஸ்டூடெண்ட் டேஸ் அண்ட் ஹீஸ் கண்டினியூஸ் டு இன்ஸ்பயர் த நியூ ஜென்ரேஷன் ஆஃப் ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் so he is our very senior leader i'm very happy that he is present here with us comrade g ramakrishnan a member of our politburo comrade k vardarajan former member of the politburo comrade k balakrishnan a newly elected secretary of the tamil nadu state committee of the communist party of india marxist a central committee member comrade sampath and all the senior leaders and on the dais and my dear brothers and sisters i am very happy to be here in tutikoran tutukudi as we call it now and this has been a historical place not only in terms of indian history because of the port and because of the industries but it's also been a historical place in terms of revolt and rebellion veera pandey kattabamman i remember watching that film when i was when i was school children school uh, i was in school he was from nearby here he was hanged by the british in 1899 120 years later we are meeting here today in between you had the legendary trade union leader v o chidambaram who started the first trade union in india in 1906 in fact the organized working class movement is born in tutukudi and this is the place the historic place where the working class movement became organized and i'm very happy to be here because of those struggles you had a regular those days 10 hours of working 10 hours of work a day a new regulation british was forced to implement and minimum wages all these are landmarks in the development of the people struggles and new civilization for india and in that historic place we were having our state conference and for that my salute to the people of tutukudi and to all the comrades here for making the state conference into a grand success as part of the tradition that tutukudi has in the beginnings of the 20th century a new beginning was made in the organized working class movement and the struggles for liberation from tutukudi today in the first two decades of the 21st century one more new beginning is being made and that new beginning we saw with the holding of the state conference of the cpim we saw with the thousands of the red shirt red shirt volunteers who marched on the streets of tutukudi here which created a a a new a new tempo and a new enthusiasm for the people of tutukudi and for tamil nadu and for also for india that this is the youth who are inheritors of the future of india like in the beginning of the 20th century a new beginning came here with the origins of the working class movement for india's independence and to change india for the better in the 21st century these youth have generated the enthusiasm that this is the new beginning to create a new tamil nadu to create a new india a better tamil nadu a better india and my salute to all of them for this beginning so that they can take this forward for a more radical change for our country but why do we need a new beginning to create a better india and a better tamil nadu we need it because of the conditions in which we have been pushed into by this bjp government under the leadership of prime minister modi during the last 4 years what is the state of our youth who are marching in these red shirts on the streets of putukoda putukoda today on the streets of tutukudi today what what is their future mr modi promised 2 crores of new jobs will be created every year for our youth today the same prime minister tells the youth 
that you sorry you i could not create jobs for you you please make pakodas and sell pakodas and make yourself employed and that is the that is how they are redeeming the promise what did he what did the prime minister promise our kisans he said that as soon as he becomes prime minister and their government comes they will give a minimum support price that is one and a half times the production cost four years down the line they have not done that in this budget again an announcement is made but in the meanwhile the distress suicides of our peasantry is growing why are they committing suicides they are the providers of food for all of us the annadata as we call that in sanskrit why is the annadata committing suicide because he's taken loans he is unable to repay and because of the debt burden he is committing suicides and this rate is increasing in the last 3 years this modi government has deposed before the supreme court of india and they have said that in these last 3 years more than 36000 36000 of our farmers have committed distress suicides that is between 36 to 40000 in 3 years this is the state of affairs of the promises he made to those who provide providers with food we had received your peasants from tamil nadu who were victims of the drought they came to delhi to protest before the parliament almost naked they came with carrying with them white rodents white rats telling the members of parliament that in tamil nadu because of the drought there is nothing to eat except these rats and that is how the annadata in tamil nadu is surviving i remember taking them to the prime minister of course he doesn't meet us but taking them to the government to other ministers saying provide some relief to these farmers in tamil nadu the government says no we don't have money stop this suicides of our farmers what is required a loan waiver we said waive the loans of our farmers they committing suicides in this way and if this continues our entire food self sufficiency will be destroyed in india government says they do not have money how much money is required to provide relief to the indian farmer not only in tamil nadu all over the country the finance minister says they require 80000 crores of rupees and they say government does not have the money but how much of loan waiver did the same modi government give to your big industrialists in the country in the last 3 years they have waived more than 2 lakh crores of rupees to industrialists who have taken loans from our banks and who are not returning those loans you have more enough money to waive more than 2 lakh crores of rupees for your industrialists but you can't protect the lives of our kisans our annadatas by giving them a waiver of 80000 crores this is the criminal nature of this government that is why when i said from tutugodi a new beginning has to begin today with this march of our youth the red shirt volunteers that new beginning is to get rid of this government which is anti human anti farmer anti youth and anti people of our country and that new beginning through a people's movement has begun here today with the cpm state conference and our appeal to all of you is come let us together create a better tamil nadu and a better india <clears throat> but then there's also another reason why a new change has to come during this four years of this modi rule last year you take 2017 what is what has happened 73% of the new wealth created in india in 2017 73% of that wealth has gone to, into the possession of 1% of our people 
1% of Indian people have acquired 73% of the country's wealth. This sort of growing inequalities, how is it happening? If demonetization and your GST have ruined the economy, if there's no employment, if your Kisans are committing suicides, then how are the rich becoming the rich, more rich? The answer lies in the fact that this Modi government is permitting the worst loot of India's resources that if since independence we have seen, and that loot can be seen. How these big industrialists are today looting our country's resources, your money, my money, kept in Indian banks, is taken as loans by them and they don't return it. The latest is Mr. Nirav Modi. You had Lalit Modi, you have Nirav Modi now, and you have Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So if Congress created four Gandhis since independence, Modi has created three Modis in three years, and more years means more such Modis will come who will keep looting the country. Now this sort of a loot that is taking place now is the reason why the poor are becoming poorer, the rich is becoming richer. And that is what has to change. That is what has to change and that change can come about only through a strong people's movement, the beginnings of which we saw today in Tutukri, in the Youth March and the Red Shirt Volunteers March today. So now you ask, Mr. Modi, this, this government has gone, will go down in the history of India as the most corrupt government we have seen. Because there's a new style of making money, new corruption. The Prime Minister very proudly says there are no middlemen in his government. Correct? Because the middlemen is the Prime Minister and the government itself. They are the middlemen. They travel abroad. Deals are made with foreign countries or foreign companies. Indian industries travels, travel with the Prime Minister and the deals are made and the Indian uh, industry and company gets those deals and we do not know what are the deals, how much is the amount. You have the Rafale, that aircraft that is for the Air Force. How much are they paying for each aircraft? The government refuses to answer. Why? that aircraft is going to be, is being bought through a private firm that belongs to a very big industrialist, a very close friend to the Prime Minister. He goes on the, on the plane with him, the deal is made, Parliament is not told, you are not told, I am not told. Our money, people's money, is used to buy these aircraft, profit is made, thousands of crores of profit by these companies belonging to their friends and their newly started companies. This is the new method. That is why when we ask the Prime Minister, please give a list of who are the industrialists whose loans you have waived in the last three years. Two lakh crores of rupees of loans. The list is not provided. That is the state secret. Who are the people that travel in the Prime Minister's plane? The plane, you pay, I pay, people pay for that plane to go abroad. Who are the people traveling with the Prime Minister? That list is never made public. Why the secrecy? Because this is the method through which such corrupt deals are made. And that is why this loot of the country that is taking place is taking place in a new manner. That is why now you know the secret. Why our Prime Minister travels abroad so, so many times? Why he goes abroad almost every third week he travels abroad? Now that is the secret. Every time he goes abroad, some deal is made, some corruption takes place. When I was in Parliament, I remember once we saw the Prime Minister, he has a separate seat in the Lok Sabha. So when the Prime Minister came and sat there, he was feeling very uneasy. He was searching for something. So we were asking the BJP MPs, why is the Prime Minister looking so uncomfortable? What was he searching for? 
Nobody would tell the truth. One BJP MP said, Sir, you don't tell my name, but I'll tell you what happened. He said, what happened? He says, the Prime Minister came to the Parliament, sat in his seat in the Lok Sabha, and he was searching for the seat belt because he was so used to traveling on the plane that he thought in Parliament also there will be a seat belt. So that is the state and the manner of our Prime Minister. Every second week he travels, every trip there is some deal or the other, there is some industrialist or the other who goes with him. That is how our country is being looted. There is no money to create jobs for our youth, no money to protect our Kisans, no money to protect our working class and the laborers from losing their jobs, but there is money for this sort of corruption and loot of the country. That has to be changed. That is the new beginning that has to be made from Tutukudi here, which has begun today, and that is the change that is required for both Tamil Nadu and for India. So on the one hand, this loot of the country, and on the other hand, the complete destruction of the India that we know, of the unity of our people and integrity of our country. What is happening today? In the name of cow protection, our Muslim brothers and sisters are being killed. In the name of cow protection, our Dalit brothers are being killed and the atrocities on Dalits and minorities is actually mounting. In the name of moral policing, our children, our youth are being told what they should wear, what they should eat, who should be their friends, how they should behave. If you do not accept what they are saying, they are attacked and beaten up. Today the country is being run, or sought to be run, by private armies, not by your police, not by your, your courts and judiciary. The country is to be run by private armies of the RSS and the BJP. And in the process, they are sharpening communal polarization, the worst vote bank politics that the country is seeing is through this BJP and this Modi government who are destroying the unity of our country, killing our own brothers and sisters for their <coughs> electoral advantage. This is the sort of total destruction of our society that they are doing. Now they have started on a new, new Rathayatra. Rathayatra to build a Ram temple at Ayodhya. Supreme Court is seized of the matter. The Supreme Court is hearing the case, but they are going ahead and that Yathra is going to come to your state. That is going to culminate in Rameshwaram. And that, while that Rathayatra takes place, this communal polarization and riots are going to increase and the country's unity and integrity, life and property of all our minorities and Dalits is under severe attack by this government and these policies. That is why today all institutions are under attack by them. The parliament, the election commission, the censor board, the judiciary, unprecedented, four senior most judges have come out and held a press conference. So they are destroying the parliamentary institutions and they want to change this constitution. They have openly declared. So they are today against the constitution that Ambedkar provided to all of us. The constitution in which our republic exists, they are destroying the unity and integrity of our country, they are attacking the livelihood of our people and impoverishing the vast majority of them. This government therefore will have to go. This government will have to go, otherwise India as we know cannot be protected. And that is why today, because the left and this red flag is the most consistent opposition to that government and raising these issues, today they are seeking to target the left. And that is where we want to warn them. We have seen the worst enemies in the world. Hitler. Hitler and his fascism wanted to destroy the red flag in the Soviet Union. Finally, it was the red flag 
that flew over Hitler's headquarters, announcing the defeat of Hitler to the world and announcing the liberation from fascism. Indira Gandhi tried to attack the CPIM and say that this red flag will be gone. But the people of India defeated emergency and immediately after that, the red flag governments emerged in Bengal, Kerala and Tripura as the single largest left force in the country. So we must warn this BJP. The more you want to attack the red flag, history, learn from history. The more you attack us, more powerful will come out and we will see the end of this misrule in India and liberate our country and create a new India and that is the mission of this red flag. <coughs> Yesterday, elections took place in Tripura. The BJP has mounted a huge attack there, huge amounts of money. They have aligned with all sorts of extremist forces in order to defeat the left front. The BJP president and the prime minister have gone to Tripura and they have said that the BJP has now unleashed a Ashwamedha Yajna. You know what an Ashwamedha Yajna is? Ashwamedha Yajna is when the king lets loose a white horse and the white horse runs across the lands. And wherever the white horse goes, that becomes the kingdom of the king. If anybody dare stop that horse, that person or that other king or the prince will have to fight this king's army. And that, because of that fear, nobody dares to stop that horse. BJP now says, their white horse is running across India, there is nobody to stop it. They forget, they are doing a Rathiyatra for Ram temple, but they forget Ramayana, the whole story. In Ramayana, Rama also conducted an Ashwamedha Yajna. In that Ashwamedha Yajna, Rama's white horse was running across these lands, but Rama's white horse was stopped. Stopped by whom? In the epic, epic story Ramayana. It was stopped by twin brothers, Lava and Kusha. And Lava Kusha, twin brothers, stop Rama's horse. Tell Mr. Modi and Mr. Amit Shah, if Rama's horse could be stopped by twin brothers, today your horse will be stopped by two political twin brothers. And who are these political twin brothers? The worker of India which holds the hammer, the Kisan of India who holds the sickle, the hammer and sickle on this red flag are the twin brothers that is going to stop this white horse and that defeat in Tripura will no, be known to the country on the 3rd of next month when the, result, when the, the results will be announced. That is why you are Tamil Nadu now. You have your AIDMK, your Mr. Paneer Selvam has gone uh, publicly now told that Prime Minister Modi had advised him to merge the AIDMK factions. Prime Minister Modi told him to be a minister in the cabinet. So everything in AIDMK is happening because Prime Minister Modi and Amit Shah is telling them. So today the AIDMK has been reduced as the junior partner of the BJP. In, the, in my mother tongue, Telugu, there is, I'm sure in Tamil also, there must be the tradition of folk, folk, uh, folk art tradition. In Telugu, you have what is called the Burakata. Where is Burakata? Tamil, Burakata? And the Burakata, I'm sorry. <laughs> and in that, in that Burakata, you have one person telling the story and there will be two people behind who will say Tandana Tana. <laughs> so, if ADMK is BJP is Tandana Tana. <laughs> now in that situation, if the country has to be saved today, if the country has to be saved today, 
the CPIM will decide our uh, 20, uh, concrete tactics in our 22nd Congress that will take place in April. But this government has to be defeated. And without defeating this country, neither India can be saved, nor the Indian people can have a better future. If that is the case, not only the BJP, but all its allies, like the Tanana Tana in your Tamil Nadu, all of them will have to be defeated, and it's only by pooling the maximum amount of anti-BJP votes whenever the election comes, that the Indian people must achieve this task, must achieve this task of today, saving India, and therefore, in order to change India for the better tomorrow, that is the task that is there before all of us. And that is why, from Tutukudi, the appeal of this state conference is, the CPIM will continue to fight. That's why we will not make into any alliance or understanding with anybody. We will fight. We will fight, we will strengthen our class struggles. But at the time of elections, we will work to pool the maximum anti-BJP vote to save India today, to save Tamil Nadu today, so that we can change India and change Tamil Nadu for the better tomorrow. And that is the task that we have today at hand. So finally, finally, I just want to, because the Prime Minister of India, goes on calling himself the Chaukidar of Indian people. You know what the Chaukidar? Chaukidar is the night watchman. He says he is the night watchman of the Indian people. So there's a story in Telugu, and the night watchman And the story is, one day, sorry, one day, the night watchman, he suddenly goes to the owner, of the factory and he tells him, Sir, Sir, you please do not do some business deal you are doing today. The owner says, Why? He says, Last night in my dream, I saw that the person with whom you are making that deal, he will get into trouble and because of that your name will be spoiled. So because of that, you sh my request to you is please do not make the deal today. So the owner says, mad fellow, why did he tell me this? I don't know. But anyway, since he told me this, I will not make the deal today. The owner does not sign that deal. And as it happens, that person with whom the owner was to sign the deal, he is raided by the enforcement department, income tax department or something. So the owner is suddenly feeling relieved. So next morning, Chaukidar, I mean Chaukidar, I mean night watchman goes to him, owner, and he says, sir, you see, I told you not to do that because you followed my advice, you were saved. So the owner says, correct, you told me not to do that. So therefore, I'll give you an, a reward. And he gives him a reward of 5,000 rupees or something. And then at the same time, he says, you are dismissed from the job. So the night, uh, night watchman says, what is this, sir? I saved your reputation and you are dismissing me from my job. He says, for saving my reputation, I have given you 5,000 rupees. For a night watchman to sleep in the night and see dreams, then you are not doing your basic duty as a night watchman. So therefore you are dismissed. So our Prime Minister, like the night watchman, he, he goes to sleep and he sees his dreams and he sells those dreams to you and me every day. Make in India, stand up India, start up India, change India, do this, do the Every day some slogan. But actual duty that he has to do of to protect Indian people and their property by being the night watchman that he doesn't do because he sleeps on duty. So a night watchman who sleeps on duty, like the story, uh, owner, who is the owner of the Prime Minister? Indian people. You, me, we are all owners of the Indian Prime Minister. So like the owner in the story dismissed that night watchman, 
the owners in India must dismiss this night watchman, Mr. Narendra Modi, and that is the only way in which the country can be protected and changed, and that is my appeal to you. Come, let us together today save India so that we can change India and Tamil Nadu for the better tomorrow.